Uh, hello friends and uh, today we will start the second part of the unit 5 that is compression member and that we will see the laced and backed end column. First we will see how to design built up compression member. Then we will see what is uh, how we design laced column and how we design the backed end column. So we will use separate video series, uh, video lectures for this and uh, today we will see how to design a built up compression member. So as you can see that uh, various shapes are being used for uh, as a compression member. So this is a single angle, double angle T, this is channel. So these are essentially used for struts. They are used in uh, struts means uh, compression member of a truss, right? So these are the compression members in truss. And rest all the images you can see that they are see this is a built up section uh, there is uh, one channel on this side another channel on this side with two uh, plates we will see what is this and uh, the different arrangement for this is uh, this is the other arrangement for block section so we are going to deal with built up section so what is built up column built up column are formed by using two or more structural shapes uh, in this figure you can see one structural shape is C or channel section and in this we are using angle we are using four angles to form a box right as a main segment and suitably stitched together to act as a singular section this uh, stitching you can see both the all the members are stitched together this is a different arrangement and this is a different arrangement so this is called lattice system so based on the lattice system there are two types of built up column first one is the built up column with lacing this is called lacing you must have seen this kind of uh, columns in railway station most of the railway stations have this old railway stations will have this battened column and uh, new new ones may have this one uh, lacing it can be single lacing or it can be double lacing also right so classification is lacing and pattern in first type that is built up column with lacing diagonal diagonal members are designed with pin ends see this is the lacing and we assume it to be pin as a pin member uh, as a strut member we will design it assuming that the ends are pinned whereas in the second type that is built up column with batons we will design it as fixed end right to the chord and function as a rectangular panel and to form a rectangular panel right so uh, quick big uh, recap of what we know about compression member see the capacity of a column it essentially depends upon the sectional area and permissible stress so load carrying capacity p is equal to stress into sectional area right so for a given sectional area see if we have fixed a sectional area based on the availability or based on the economy or the cost of the structure this permissible stress or the design of the column is generally governed by this important term that is called slenderness ratio and another important factor is buckling curve see table 9 to calculate this fcd and uh, table 9 is subdivided into four parts that is curve a curve b c and d so that depends upon the bulk buckling curve classification which depends upon the cross sectional of the cross section of the section used and what is slenderness ratio slenderness ratio is nothing but effective length we have already seen what is effective length it basically depends upon the unsupported length of column and the end conditions right and least radius of carriation and least radius of carriation now we can say that stress is inversely proportional to slenderness ratio as we see that the value of slenderness ratio is increasing the permissible stress decreases and as slenderness ratio increases as the slenderness ratio increases obviously the load carrying capacity will also reduce because it is associated with area into fcd right so in all we can conclude that fcd is directly proportional to r minimum 
FCD is directly proportional to R minimum. See, if R minimum is more, then permissible stress will be more. So, we will focus some more time on this, what is the radius of squareation or R minimum. See, as a designer, we cannot change the length of the column, but definitely we can play with this section, right? We can play with the geometry or the cross section of the given structure, right? So, the rolled section have their limitations and they can offer a limited value of R, Z, Z and R, Y, Y. You can get these values in from steel table. But when for a given section, for a given section, large radius of gyration is required and that too in both directions. Generally for rolled section for I section, R, Z, Z is greater than R, Y, Y. But now as per the requirement of the structure, we want larger radius of gyration and the radius of gyration should be large in both directions also. So how we will do it? So to achieve it, first option is that is very uneconomical and uh, uneconomical option that to use larger section. Right. So this is ruled out. So what we do to increase the radius of gyration? We try to increase the value of radius of gyration by providing more area. More area is placed away from the centroidal axis. So suppose this is the centroidal axis. This is the centroidal axis. What we are doing? We are keeping this angle section away from the centroidal axis. We are keeping this. This is the centroidal axis. We are keeping the section away from the centroidal axis. This is how we play with the radius of gyration. Radius of gyration is nothing but under root i by a. Right. So a is constant. Um, in some books you will find that the same explanation is given with moment of inertia also. So moment of inertia and radius of variation they are used interchangeably in the explanation. Right? So for selection of any section it depends upon the requirement. Right? This is ISMB 400, ISHB 400, ISWB 400. These are the two different weights for ISHB 400 that is available. Right? So if we see this ISMB 400, we will find that weight is less, right? Thickness of flange is more as compared to others. And Z value, ZYY is far greater than Z, ZP about Y direction. So this is a special requirement and this is specifically used for beam section where flanges resist the, flanges resist the moment and bending stress is governed by the value of plastic section modulus. So ISMB 400 is essentially a beam section, right? Whereas in case of ISHB 400, what we see area is very large. Area is quite large as compared to this one. So another thing what we see is radius of gyration on the other side. We generally refer to R minimum. For calculating slenderness ratio on FCD, we require R minimum. So clearly from the table we see that the value of radius of variation on the other axis is also larger as compared to other values. Right? So this brings us to the question. We will start this, and uh, this is a textbook question from SK Dugal. So what I have done, I have split it into three parts. First, what we will do, we will go for design of built up section then we will go for lacing and battening right as well a built up section 10 meter long to carry a factored load already the load is factored 1080 kilo newton so this is the boundary condition the column is restrained in position but not in direction at both ends again as per the given data we can say that if for effective length value of kl K will be 1. Why? Because it is a case of pin pin. Both the ends are restrained in position, but they are free to rotate. They are free to rotate. In direction, restraint is not there. So, recommended value of K is 1. It is given in page 45. We have to design the column by using two channels. First option is placed back to back. Backs are placed back to back and toe to toe. This. So again this is a design problem only load is given so we have to design it right so 
So now come to uh, effective slant on the ratio for laced and bat down column in page number 48 and 51 the effective slant on the ratio is uh, specified at in IS 800. So for uh, lacing we will read it. The effective slant on the ratio of laced column shall be taken as 1.05 times the actual maximum slant on the ratio in order to account for shear deformation right in a laced or battened column there will be some shear deformation it is additional force that is expected to uh, be applied on the section so what we do we increase the we increase five percent value of slenderness ratio so if we are increasing slenderness ratio strength will fcd will go down load carrying capacity will go down right so from this only you can very well estimate which is more efficient battened or lesson laced so very clearly it is lacing is more efficient as compared to batten from this so now buckling curve what we do we know that buckling curve for built up section on either axis is c so this is a built up member two channel section and all whatever it is given it is c so we are going to use c curve okay whenever we start a design we should have a uh, trial section to, to get the trial section in this case we are not going to assume slenderness ratio then we calculate slenderness ratio then we get the value of fcd we directly assume fcd as 150 newton per millimeter square then area required is equal to load upon stress so this is the factor load divided by this assume value of stress we'll get the required area of section is 7200 millimeter square now based on this area we will try to find a section uh, which will offer more than this area so required area should be less than the available area you should always provide more area than required so we are going with two numbers of ismc 300 at the rate 351 newton per meter so indian standard medium channel this is the overall depth 300 at the rate 351 newton per meter this is the weight of the section okay so in in case of built up section the engineering from engineering point of view what we do is we adjust the spacing between the section we adjust the spacing between the centroids of the section so that radius of variation of the composite section is approximately equal so for the trial section we are using ismc 300 so this is the area so we are using two i section therefore available area is 9128 which is quite greater than uh, the required one rzz this value this is the z axis and radius of variation about z axis is 118 about y axis it is 26 and uh, cyy this is the distance this distance from the back of the channel to the position of centroid so this distance is cyy we are going to use it very often and what is the width of flange this length is called the width of flange it is 90 millimeter and this is g this is used for connection at what distance we are going to provide bolt it is given in uh, from steel double we have derived this value now what we do for the trial section we will calculate the value of uh, fcd again so lambda is equal to kl upon r minimum so what whatever is the value of kl we will increase it by five percent we have already seen it it is given in class 7.6.1.5 page 48 you can refer that so 1.05 into what is the value of k it has one what is the unsupported length it is 10 meters and divided by r minimum divided by r minimum why we have taken this uh, 118 because we are going to adjust the two sections such that rzz and ryy are approximately equal so that is why we are taking r minimum as 118 so it is an engineering application how we are going to use radius of variation for the advantage right so we get the value as 88.9 so what is the unit any guesses 
okay so again i'm telling that slenderness ratio lambda is a unitless quantity so now we have the value of lambda we know that classification is curve c now we'll try to find the value of fcd so we'll come to curve c for fe 215 page 42 table 9 we'll interpolate it between these value 80 is 136 and for lambda is equal to or kl upon r is equal to 90 value is 121 so for 88.9 the value is going to be 122.65 mpa so now when we have the value of fcd we will simply multiply with the uh, effective area so we will get the load carrying capacity of the section so area into stress we will get the load carrying capacity of the section which is greater than 1080 that means two sections ismc 300 at the rate 351 newton per meter is safe then channel are placed so that ryy and rzz are similar so main issue is the spacing spacing of the channel what is the distance between yy axis of the uh, yy centroidal axis of the channel so this is how we play it so to achieve radius of variation approximately equal about both axes we'll play with the moment of inertia um, radius of variation is nothing but i by a so under root i by a so no need to calculate a and divide it we directly what we do equate i z z and i y y so we are using two channels so we are multiplying both the sides by two i z z you can directly take from steel table no moment uh, this is moment of inertia about z axis no need to apply parallel axis theorem right but i y y plus area of the section into distance this distance whole square so what is this distance this is spacing what we have want to find and what is this distance this is c y y so s by 2 plus c y y whole square so we'll get the value of this part so when we calculate unknown is s so we'll get the value of s as 183.10 millimeter